Um, right, so today we're going to do integration by substitution. So if you guys have anything you want me to go through from the previous exercises on integration, uh, please let me know. I'm actually kind of uh, surprised slash worried that I haven't actually received any questions from the previous exercises yet. So it's either you guys are perfectly okay with everything so far, or you haven't done anything yet. Hmm. Anyway, uh, let's continue with uh, integration of subs by substitution. Okay, let me just move that out of the way. Right. So, let's see, what do we know so far? We know that if we integrate um, some function of x to the power of n dx, we would get fx to the power of n minus 1 over f prime x, and then, oh sorry, this is n plus 1 and then n plus 1 plus c. And we also know that if you were to integrate sine fx, so normally when you integrate sine, you get negative cos, right? So you still have negative cos, but you have to put a f prime x here, and then plus c. And then the other thing that we did was uh, cos x, which gives a sine fx and then f prime x and then plus c. And then we also have secant squared fx, which gives us tangent fx over f prime x. And then we also did uh, e to the power of fx. So this one is going to give us uh, e f x over f prime x plus c and then we also did 1 over f x or specifically f x to the power of 1 so this one the condition is n is not negative 1 but if it's negative 1 then you end up with uh, what we get here for number 6 which means you get ln and then modulus fx over f prime x plus c. So this is what we have done so far, right? And then you also know how to integrate uh, cos squared, cos uh, 4, you know how to integrate sine squared and sine to the power of 4. Hang on, let me make my pointer bigger. Make my pointer chunky. There we go. So, if you have the summary, the flowchart that I've uh, given you guys, we've actually done all of these, aside from this guy right here. So this is what you get when you integrate these functions. We haven't done this last one yet, so I'll talk about that soon. And then uh, we've done this guy here, sine nx, where n is even. We've done this, but we haven't done the part where n is odd. Okay, so we're going to do that today. And I'm going to show you how to do this as well. Okay, so these two is uh, these two here. This is just stuff that you've done from AS. So only this part remains and this part and this guy right here. Okay, so um, remember that when I showed you these six... Um, equations, there's actually a condition associated with these equations. The condition is fx must be linear, remember? So the highest power of x must be 1. So what if it's not 1? Okay. Um, let's say we have integrate x, 2x, and then x squared 
plus 5 dx. Okay, something simple like that. So, um, if you see an integral like this, normally what you would do is you would probably try to expand it first, right? And then you integrate the terms separately. So maybe you get, you know, something like uh, 10x dx, and then you integrate the term separately, which is going to give you 8x squared uh, plus 10 plus c, because it is an indefinite integral. So there you go. Another way of uh, integrating this is using something called integration by substitution. And the way that works is you have to realize that suppose you say this guy is fx. That means this guy here must be some constant times f prime x. As you can see, the constant in this case is 1. Okay, so let me just write that here. You see fx is equals to x squared plus 5. If I differentiate fx, I'm going to get 2x. So k in this case would be 1. Okay, so whenever you have something of this form, k f prime x times fx to the power of, you know, uh, in this case, the power is 1, you can always employ integration by substitution. And you do that by starting uh, with a substitution. You say, let u be equals to x squared plus 5. Okay, so now we have integrate 2x times u dx. But you can't integrate this because this is uh, dx, this one is u. So what do you do? You have to change this to du first. Everything has to be in terms of u, preferably. So du dx is going to give you 2x. So that means if I try to make dx the subject, I'm going to get... 1 over 2x du. Okay, so taking that, we're going to substitute that in here and we're going to get integrate 2x u 1 over 2x du. And as you can see, because, because I have a f prime x here, it's going to cancel with the f prime x from this guy, which eliminates the problem uh, that we faced when we had a nonlinear function. So like this guy here, we can't, we can't do this if this is non-linear, if the bracket inside the fx is non-linear. But we can for this case because this guy is a quadratic and this guy is the derivative of this quadratic. Okay, so this is going to just cancel. And then we get u du. So how, what, what happens when you integrate u? Well, you just get u squared over 2 plus c. And what is uh, u going to be? u is x squared plus 5 squared over 2 plus c. There. Oh, wait. Actually, I messed up the integration here. What am I doing? I, I differentiate instead of integrated. This one should give me uh, 2x4 over 2 plus... 5x squared plus c. Okay, yeah, I messed up there. For some reason, I differentiated instead of integrated. Yep. Okay, so let's check and see whether we get the same thing. If I try to expand this, I'm going to get x4 plus uh, 10x squared plus 25. Wait a minute, why do I not get the same thing? Did I mess up somewhere? Let me see. This is u, and then I differentiate this, I get 2x. So dx is 1 over 2x. Put that in here. Cancel, cancel. I get u squared over 2. So u is this guy, this guy. And u squared over 2 plus c. Then I'm going to get 10x squared plus 25. Did I mess this up? 
x4 over 4. Did I expand this correctly? 2x cubed plus 10x. Hmm. Oh, wait. Hmm. So we simplify this, I get x4 over 2 plus 5x squared plus 25 plus c. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's still correct. So, um, yeah, so you can see here and here it's the same thing. So you might be wondering why is it that this is different? So c here, this is 25 plus c. But 25 plus c is just another constant. You just call it c prime. So it is essentially the same thing, okay? Now, why would you want to do this rather than doing this? Because this seems a lot easier, doesn't it? Well, let me show you another example. Let's do one more example. So let's say we do integrate 2x squared. Uh, maybe just do 2x again. 2x and then x squared plus 5. Maybe this time I put a 3 over here. And then I raise this to the power of 10. There. To the power of 10. Now if you try to do this the normal way, by expanding this and then integrating them separately, you would be expanding for a long time because this is to the power of 10. Right? So that's going to take you forever. So it is a lot easier if you try to use integration by substitution. So first, let's check. Uh, usually, the thing inside the bracket is fx. So suppose this is fx, and you differentiate fx, what do you get? Well, I'm going to get uh, 6x. And as you can see, 6x and 2x, the, the powers of x are the same. So, you can actually use integration by substitution. Hey, Yoshi. Hello. Welcome. <laughs> Last year you're studying calculus. Oh, wait. Last year. So, you've graduated, Yosh? Are you in uh, university now or something? Okay, so, um, you can see here that the K in this case is going to be uh, three, but you don't really have to identify what k is. It doesn't really matter. So let's start by substituting the thing inside the bracket as u. Okay, so now we're going to get 2x times u to the power of 10 dx. And then uh, what are we going to do here? We have to make dx become du, so we're going to go du dx, and that's going to give me 6x. You're doing engineering in uni, but you see what happens. Things might change, who knows. Oh, which field of uh, engineering you're doing, Yosh? Uh, so let's make du the subject. Du is going to be... Wait, did I mess up? Hang on. Du... Oh, yeah, I'm trying to make dx the subject. What am I saying? I'm trying to make dx the subject, so dx is equals to du over 6x. Civil engineering at the moment. Oh, I know a few people who are doing civil engineering or who did civil engineering. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so we're going to put that in here. u10 and then du over 6x. One of my high school friends, uh, he did civil engineering. I think it's working in Sabah at the moment, the uh, east, eastern peninsula of Malaysia. And then let's, okay, so we can see here that the x cancels, which is what that really matters here. We don't really care whether the constants cancel or not, because it's a constant anyway, it doesn't really matter. We can always factorize the constant out. So in this case, we're going to factorize one over 3 out. So we have u, 10, du. Okay, look, so now we can integrate this boy and we're going to get u11 over 11. Hey, I need to put a plus c over here. 
And now we can replace the U with what we substituted earlier. And lo and behold, we get what we want to get, which is a lot easier than trying to expand this using the binomial theorem and integrating each term separately, because that would take forever, and we don't have time for that. Okay, so done, done. Okay, let's do more examples. Uh, let me show you another example. Let me just move this over here like this. Uh, let's see, example three. Let's do a trigonometric, no, let's do an exponential example. Let's say we have, uh, hmm, let's see, x squared plus one. Sure, why not? Then we have e to the power of 10x cubed plus x dx. There we go. Something like that. So, whenever you see a product of two functions, you can see here this is like one function, this is another function, right? product of two functions. Usually you only have uh, two ways of doing this. You either do substitution or you do integration by parts. Integration by parts is something that we haven't done yet, but I'll show you guys how to do that in a bit. Uh, oh, no worries, Yosh. No worries. Glad you are enjoying this. <laughs> I wish my students would uh, could say the same. You guys are enjoying it, right? Never mind, don't answer that. Right, um, <clears throat> so. Okay, so first we're going to check and see whether the function here is a derivative. Okay, so if I say fx is equals to e10x cubed plus x, what happens if I differentiate this guy? Uh, sorry, hang on, hang on. Uh, this one is a bit different. Hang on. This one you want to look at this guy here. So this one you want to look at this as the fx. So if fx is equals to 10x cubed plus x, if I differentiate this, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 30x squared plus 1. Okay. Um, actually, you know what? I think I kind of messed up the thing here. Let me just get rid of this because I don't think that would be doable. Uh, I'm just going to cheat a little and uh, go with that. There. Okay. So if the exponent or the power, you, you differentiate that and you get this guy here in front, that means you can actually do integration by substitution. So we're going to start by saying u is equals to 10x cubed and then du dx equals to 30x squared which means um, dx must be equals to, uh, let's see, du over 30x squared. Aha, okay. And then we can now replace this with x squared e to the power of u, and then this becomes du over 30x squared. And now you can see that the x squares would cancel and then go poof, disappear. And we can factorize the 1 over 30 out, and then we have eu du. So if you're trying to integrate e to the power of u with respect to u, you just end up with the same thing, right? Because that's how you integrate the exponential function. And then we're going to replace the u with whatever we got earlier, which was um, 10x cubed plus c. Hey, done. Hey, Danny. Hello. Ooh. Disgusting, Danny. <laughs> okay, so um, that's that. Now, if you try to differentiate this guy and you don't get this guy here, that means you probably shouldn't be doing integration by substitution. There's probably something else you have to do first, or maybe you messed up something early on. Okay. And as you can see, when you differentiate fx and you get f prime x, the only thing that you care about is that the powers would cancel. You don't Bruh. really care whether the constants will cancel or not. 
Okay, so as long as you get some constant times your power, you are good to go. <laughs> Bro. Okay, so we're done with this. Let's do another example. Uh, let's see, what shall we do here? Let me think. Let's do a trigonometric one. So let's say we have... Aha! Okay, let me show you how to do this. Sine cubed x dx. What happens when you try to integrate an odd power of sine or cos? I'll, sh I'll show you the cos one in a bit. we got a bad case of acid reflex. <laughs> Oof. So, remember what I told you uh, last class. Whenever you see an odd power, the first thing you want to do is you want to split it up into odd and even. So you get something like this. Okay? And then you want to use the identity to write this as 1 minus cos squared x. <laughs> and then you want to expand this. So you get this guy here. All right, so the reason we are doing this, the reason we are splitting it up, is so that we get this term here. As you can see, this term, you can actually use integration by substitution to solve, uh, not to solve, to, uh, to evaluate. So let me just show you what I mean. Let me just put a dx here. This one is sine x, this one is bracket, cos x, and then squared dx. Okay, so check this out. Imagine this is fx, right? fx is cos x. What happens if I differentiate it? I'm going to get negative sine x. Ooh, there we go. This is uh, f prime x, more or less. I mean, there's a negative in front, but, you know, it's basically some constant times f prime x, which is the form that we are looking for. And then the power is squared. It doesn't really matter what the power is, as long as the thing in the bracket when you differentiate it, you get this guy out here with some constant. Then you can use integration by substitution. So this guy, we integrate sine, we get negative cos x. And then this guy here, what we're going to do is we're going to replace u with cos x. Okay? And that means du dx must be sine, negative sine x, which means dx has to be du over negative sine x and then we can chuck that into this guy here so we're going to get uh, sine x and then u squared and then du over negative sine x and you can see the sine x and the sine x would go and cancel each other out and they go poof disappear and you get negative cos x plus u squared du and then this becomes u cubed over 3 plus c and now we can replace our u with the substitution we did earlier, which is cos x. And done. That's how you integrate uh, sine to some odd power. Okay, there we go. Now, a follow-up example, I think, would be... Uh, let's try doing... Uh, what else can we do? Let's see, we can try doing sine to the power of 5. Why not? So how do we integrate sine to the power of 5? Well, this is an odd power, so we're going to start by splitting it up into even and odd. Like so. And then you can see this guy here is actually sine squared x and then squared. Okay. And then we're going to use our basic identity to split this into 1 minus cos squared x and then squared. And then we're going to expand this guy, which is going to give us 2 cos squared x plus cos 4x dx. And then we're going to get sin x minus 2 sin x cos squared x plus sin x cos 4x dx. Okay, this is this is great because you can see here, uh, let me just rewrite it so it looks a bit clearer. So sine x minus uh, 2, hang on, minus 2 sine x bracket cos x bracket squared plus sine x cos x 
to the power of 4 dx. Okay, check this out. So this guy is fx, right? If you differentiate this, you're going to get some constant times the derivative. Same thing for this guy here. Differentiate that, you're going to get some constant times the derivative. So this is exactly what we want. We can now use integration by substitution. So we're going to say uh, let u be equals to cos x. And we're going to do the same thing, essentially. So we're going to end up with this guy again. And I'm going to substitute that in here. So we have integrate sine x uh, dx and then minus 2 times sine x and then u squared du over negative sine x. I'm doing each of them separately. So we have plus sine x and then u to the power of 4 du over negative sine x. And then the sine x's would cancel and they just go poof, disappear. And then sine x here is going to give me a negative cos x minus 2 so plus 2u squared this guy is going to give me negative u4 plus c hey we are done so u is going to be cos x right so we get cos squared x here this is cos 4x plus c there we go hmm. and done Okay, so that's that. Uh, I suppose it is only natural that we try to do uh, cos as well, cos cube x. So let's do that. Let me just, just go back here and then just go down here. So let's do another example, integrate cos cube x dx. So again, we're going to split this into odd and even. And we're going to use our identity to split this into 1 minus sine squared x, and then we're going to expand, which gives me cos x sine squared x dx. And if I rewrite this, you can actually see that this is in fact the form that we need for integration by substitution. Over here is fx, and then over here is f prime x times some constant, right? So, we're going to get cos x dx minus, okay, let's see, we're going to substitute the thing in the bracket with u. So that's going to be sine x, which means du dx must be cos x, which means dx has to be du over cos x. We're going to take that, we're going to substitute that in here, which is going to give us, let's see, integrate cos x and then u squared and then du over cos x. And then this cancel with this. And then we end up with sine x here minus u cubed over a tree. And where did I? Did I forget to? Did I have forgotten something over here? Uh, yes, I did forget something here. My bad. I should have increased this to tree over a tree. Forgot about that. This one should be. I actually forgot to integrate it. Hang on. This is u5 over 5. This should be u5 over 5. There we go. Fix that. There. Right, so going down here, um, we have du, so then get plus c. And done. So u is going to be sine cubed x over 3 plus c. And that's how you get cos cube x. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's that. Mm. Let me think, what else is there? Oh, there's also one more. Okay, before we continue, let me try to summarize everything with like a general formula. So as you can see so far, whenever we try to, so generally, whenever we try to integrate something of this form, power of n dx, we would actually get, um, k 
and then fx to the power of n plus 1 over n plus 1 plus c. Okay, so just to show you where that is, if you look at this guy here, Right, in the end, you get something like this. So the function fx remains the same, but then the power has increased by one, and you're dividing by that increased power right there. But then the derivative is gone. Okay, in this case, the k is a one. So you don't really see it, but uh, let me see if you can find something with a non 1k uh, right over here. So first, imagine you take out the 2, and eventually you're going to end up with a 3, 1 over 3, down here, there. No, wait, the 3 is actually the power. Uh, where is the... Okay, maybe it's not quite clear. Maybe I can do another example. Let me think. Hmm. <laughs> okay, imagine you integrate... Um, ...ten x. And then this one is x squared... ...plus... ...seven. To the power of... ...you know, 100, whatever. You put any number you want, doesn't really matter. So, in this case, our a is, okay, in this case, we're going to take out the 10 first, like so, All right, and then you can see that if I say u is x squared plus 7, then du dx is going to give me 2x. So if this is fx, and this is kf prime x, then our k is going to be half. Okay, so anyway, let's try to integrate this guy here with u to the power of 100. This is going to be, let's see, dx is equals to du over 2x. So I'm going to chuck that in, du over 2x. And then we are going to cancel the x's. And what do we get? We have u100 over 2. Oh, sorry, I should have increased the, this one by 1. And then divide by 101. Plus c. There. So ignoring this 10 here, because this 10 we can actually take out before we actually do the integral, so that it actually looks like this. You can see that... Um, Oh, wait, our k should actually be... Our k is a half. Oh, there we go. So k is there. See? So our k is a half. k is over there. So you can see this form looks exactly like this guy here. So this is the general formula. So depending on uh, your preference, you can either remember this and just, you know, use this whenever the situation arises, or you could remember the uh, technique of how to do it by substitution. I would recommend learning how to do it from scratch like this, using the substitution and all that, because this is actually, uh, this is how it should be done, technically. But in the exam, uh, suppose you want to just go from here to here, you, you technically could, um, they're not going to deduct marks for just skipping all these steps here. But I highly recommend doing it like this so that it's actually more useful to know how to do it like this later on as well, especially when we go on to uh, differential equations. So I recommend doing it from scratch. Okay, anyway, uh, there's also one other thing I have to show you before we stop for today. Actually, do I want to show you that one? Let me think. Hmm. 
do I want to show you that? Hang on, let me just check something. <laughs> I feel like that might be a bit too much. Yeah, okay, you know what? Let me just show you the next one. Okay, so. Um, this general formula here only works for n is not equals to minus 1. n is uh, some integer. Okay, it could be a negative integer, it could be negative 10, that it still works. Okay, let me show you another example here. Let's say we have integrate, uh, let's see, integrate x squared plus 2x. Oh, hang on, let me do it as a fraction. Let's do x squared plus 2x divided by x cubed plus x squared mm -hmm. mm, yeah okay and then this is squared yep this should work Right, so if you get something like that, um, what you want to do is you want to try writing it in this form. You want to try writing this in this form and see whether you can actually get it to work. So we have x cubed plus 3x squared and then to the power of minus 2. Okay, so suppose you say this is fx and then you differentiate it. What are you going to get? Well, if I differentiate it, I'm going to get 3x squared plus 6x and I can actually factorize the 3 out so I get x squared plus 2x oh you can see it's actually some constant times um, x squared plus 2x right which means this guy here is actually k times f prime x there. let me just put it like that 1 over 3 f prime x. See? In this case, our k is 1 over 3. So this is actually this form, which means we can actually just use integration by substitution. So we're going to say let u be equals to x cubed plus 3x squared, which means du dx must be 3x squared plus 6x, which means dx has to be du over 3x squared plus 6x, okay, which is actually du over 3 times x squared plus 2x. And now we can chuck that in here. So we have x squared plus 2x bracket, and then u to the power of minus 2, and then du over 3x squared plus 2x. So as you can see, these would cancel with this, which is kind of the point that we have to make sure that it's, it's the same right and then now we're gonna integrate this normally so if we integrate this you get u minus 1 over minus 1 plus c which is actually uh, let's see x cubed plus 3x squared to the power of minus 1 over minus 1 plus c which is negative 1 over x cubed plus 3x squared plus c and done. Okay, so if you see a fraction, it could actually be integration by substitution in this guise. So try imagining putting this out on the side and see whether you can get the same form. If you can, then you can actually just do this. Okay? Alright.
uh, which example was that? That was example, example five, and then there should be six. I forgot to label the, the number, so there should be six here. This one should be example seven. There we go. Right. Now, let me show you one more. What happens if your n is to the power of minus one? Can you still do this? The answer is you can't because if n is to the power of minus one, imagine if you try to integrate u to the power of minus one, you're going to get u to the power of zero divided by zero. You can't divide by zero, right? So what do you do? Well, if you have u to the power of minus one, that means you are integrating one over u. And you know what happens when you integrate one of u? You get ln u, right? So that is what we have to do here. Um, so you're, you're still integrating by substitution, but you have to be careful that you actually get a ln instead of a something like this. So let me do an example here. Let's say we have integrate x squared plus 2x over x cubed plus 3x squared. But in this time, I don't have a bracket with a square. Okay, this time it's just, there's nothing there. So I'm going to go dx. Okay, so let's start by writing them as a product of two functions and see whether differentiating one gives us the other. Okay, as you can see, if I differentiate this, I'm going to get some constant times this. So this is actually in the form that we want. However, the power is to the power of minus 1. So you can still do integration by substitution. Just be careful. So let me just show you. Um, let's say u is equals to x cubed plus 3x squared. Okay, I'm just doing the same thing here. I don't want to write this again. So this is actually the same thing. So we're going to get x squared plus 2x. And then this thing is u to the power of minus 1. This guy here is going to give me, um, what is it? Uh, du over 3 bracket x squared plus 2x. Cancel, cancel. They're gone. Which means you get 1 over 3 integrate u to the power of minus 1 du. Which is the same as integrating 1 over u. Which is the same as getting ln modulus of u plus c. Remember to put a the modulus there. So the u is going to be, uh, what was it? x cubed plus 3x squared. There. So if your power is to the minus 1, you would actually get something like this rather than something like this. Okay. So let's do another general equation here. So generally, oh wait, why am I using this weird color? So generally, if you are integrating k f prime x and then fx to the power of minus 1, or you can sort of write it as uh, something like this, k f prime x over fx. Okay, this is dx. If you're integrating anything that looks like this, you would actually get... Um, Let me think. Oh, okay. You would actually get k and then ln modulus fx and then plus c. There we go. Okay. So, this is actually this guy here. So, when you try to integrate this guy, you can see it's fx over gx. And first you want to check and make sure it looks like this form. If it looks like this form, yes, then you want to do integration by substitution. Okay, so if you do integration by substitution, you could either end up with this guy here, or you could end up with this guy here. But if the answer is no, it doesn't look like this. Uh, oh, actually no, if it looks like this, and it looks like this form, you have to do partial fractions next but we haven't done that yet so uh, i mean we have done partial fractions but i haven't shown you in integration yet so we're gonna skip that for now 
So we'll do this part and this part in the next class. Okay, so we are done with this part, this part, and we have shown you this guy here. Okay, okay, look. Um, what else do we want to do? We could do the arc tangent thingy. Let me think. Should I do that? Hmm. I feel like it might be a bit too much. Oh my God! Information overload. So I think for now should be enough. We could do exercise eight B. 8C and um, 8D. Hmm. Oh, wait. Let me show you something else. There's actually one more thing I want to show you. So let's say we integrate um, over here. Example 9. What if we integrate tangent? Aha! So I've shown you how to integrate secant squared, but I haven't shown you how to integrate tangent yet. So how do we integrate tangent? Well, first you want to write tangent as sine x over cos x, okay? And then if you look really carefully, you see that this is in fact this. You see? Do you see it? Do you see it? Oh, okay. So you want to write this as sine x and then bracket cos x to the power of minus 1. And u is equals to cos x, which means the du dx must be equals to negative sine x. Therefore, dx is equals to du over negative sine x. Okay, so now we have sine x here. We're going to replace the cos x with u. And this guy becomes du over negative sine x dx. We're going to cancel the sine x's, and then now we're left with integrate 1 over u du, which we know is actually ln modulus of u. And u is actually cos x, so there we go. And this is what happens when you integrate tangent. Okay? There. Okay. Um, <laughs> All right, yep. I think we're going to stop here for today. There's actually one, two, three, three more sections to go. So we're going to do that tomorrow. So for now, I think that's enough. Uh, we're going to stop here. And then you can actually try. So try exercise 8B. 8C and 8D. So for 8D, you can't do all the questions yet, but you should be able to do questions 1 to, one to 3. So try 1, 2, and 3. Okay. Questions 1, 2, and 3. There. Hmm. Trigo part one notes. What notes are you referring to? Oh, hey, Danny Bot. Hello. Mm What do you mean the video disappeared? You mean it's not on my channel anymore? So, um, you guys should know that the videos on my channel, they only last for two weeks. This is not what I've said. It's, uh, it's just how Twitch works. So after two weeks, it just disappears. Um, but I've been exporting these videos to YouTube, so I'll check and see whether I've exported uh, any of the old videos to YouTube. Then if I have, I will try to make them public and then I'll share them with you guys. So you could review some of the older classes. <clears throat> yeah. So, 
Oh, also, you can actually, you guys can actually try doing some of these questions here. Uh, these are some additional exercises, so you should be able to do... Let me see. You can actually do one. Okay, you can do one. Um, number two, let me think. Number two. Number two you can skip for now. So you can do one, three... One, three, four six one three four and six yeah so for this exercise try um one three four and six so try these questions for now okay and we will continue with the rest of integration tomorrow yeah tomorrow yeah and uh but if you guys have a lot of questions on the ones that we are currently doing, which I suspect you will because this is quite a tricky part of the chapter, uh, we can discuss them tomorrow instead of starting a new section. So, But it's, uh, it's up to you to actually do the questions. I can't do the questions for you. All right, so we are done for today. I'm going to export this and I'll share this on the WhatsApp group so you could uh, review these notes and these examples in your own time. And uh, please, please try these questions so you can follow with what we have been doing. Okay, and uh, I shall stop here for today. Bye-bye. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.